Good evening, y'all, and welcome back to Apron Strings. Kind of been on a sweet streak this week, I guess. I'm going to um, make some bars that Mama used to make when I was a kid. And it's a chocolate chip uh, 9x13 pan bar. Back in the day, they called them Congo bars. You can call them whatever you want to, just call them delicious. We're going to get over to the mixer, and uh, I've got the ingredients all pretty well measured out, and get them mixed up, and then we'll just bake them in a 9x13 in a June oven, and then we'll have us some goodies. It used to be, mamas would make these and package them up. Kids could take them back to college with them, because they're yummy, and it's something that everybody likes. So we'll get over to the mixer, get them all mixed up, and we'll have us another good snack. Now the recipe calls for a cup of softened butter, and I've got that in there already. I'm just going to turn it on just a snitch, and then I'm going to add my sugar. We need two cups of packed brown sugar. And let's cream that a little bit. We need to add three eggs. One, and I'm going to beat it a little bit after each one. And two. That's a big old egg. That chicken got busy. Ooh, that's a double yolk. How about that? I wish that would have been in my frying pan for breakfast, pooey. And we need one more. I'm going to mix this up and then we'll be right back. Okay, we need to add in um, two teaspoons of baking powder and a teaspoon of salt. And I've got that right here. And I'm going to go ahead and add in one tablespoon of vanilla. This is some that I made. Give that a little spin. That brown sugar is going to make them taste yummy. I like anything with brown sugar in it. Okay, now I need to add two and a half cups of flour. Mix that a little bit. Told y'all one time I had told my friend, add your flour and then bump it. Well, I meant bump it off and on like this. She turned it on full speed and went to hitting on the bowl, and she had flour everywhere. Okay, I'm going to mix this until it's well incorporated, and then I'll add all those chocolate chips to it. I'm going to scrape it down just to be sure that everything is real thick. I remember that. You have to spread it in your pan good when you put it in there because it's thick. Even with a double yolk egg, pooey. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add my chocolate chips. I've got one and a half cups of milk chocolate and a half a cup of semi-sweet chocolate. Now that's up to y'all what kind you want to put in it. I think 
that's mixed pretty good. I've got just a few little crumbs of pecans here. Probably a, not even a fourth of a cup, but I'm going to put them in there. Okay, I'm going to get y'all back over to the butcher block, and we'll get this uh, put in the pan and ready to bake. Okay, I sprayed this pan with uh, kitchen spray. And what I'm going to do, because it's very thick, I'm just going to dollop it in there. And then I'll try to spread it around the meat. See, I don't have anybody here hollering, Mama, leave some in the pan, leave some in the pan. That's what my kids used to do. And that's what I used to tell my mom, too. Don't get it all. Leave some. Leave some on the beater. I got one chicken out there. And she was the uh, head of the pecking order when I had the four red chickens and she was mean. Let me tell you, when I got these Dominickers and I got eight of them at a time, they were already laying. I told y'all about them, showed you them. Well, you know, they have a dominant one and it traumatized that poor old chicken so bad, she don't try to peck anybody. When I let those chickens out, she has a place in the backyard that she goes and stays all day long and hides. And when I go around there, instead of her getting up and following me back to the pen, because all the others have already run in the pen like they know to do, I have to pick her up and bring her to the pen. And I don't put her down in the pen because if I do, four, about four of those Dominickers will run over there and start pecking on her, knock her plumb over on the ground. So I pick the little thing up and I go put her up in the, in the coop where she can go ahead and roost for the night. I don't know why if she was so... Um, sure of herself to pet those other three red ones. Why can't she take up for herself with these Dominickers? But let me tell you, she's scared to death of them. I'm watching, I would be too if four adults was beating me with a bat at one time. I think I'd be scared too. Let me uh, wash my hands off and I'm going to get this in the oven. I think 30 to 40 minutes. And it's going to be done around the edges, but the middle may look a little bit uh, not done, but you just let it cool and everything is ready. So I'll get it in the oven, and we'll have us some uh, Congo bars here in a little bit. Okay, we got out of the oven. You can see the chocolate chips in them. And I gotta let them cool so I can cut them, and we'll taste of them, and I hope y'all can tell by me licking my lips how good they are. Be back in just a little bit. Got them all cut and plated up, stacked on top of each other. And let me tell you what, they are just chocolate goodness, folks. Y'all need to try this recipe real fast. Okay, y'all, you got you another 100-year-old recipe to try. And it is tried and proven and delicious. If you like chocolate and you like chocolate chips, it's, a, it's like a soft chocolate chip cookie almost. It's delicious. So y'all try it and let me know what you think about it. I just talked to my son and he was telling me that um, they'd been to a couple of grocery stores up there and there's a lot of empty shelves. Now I don't know if that trucking situation in Canada is trickling down and having an effect on our deliveries or not, but y'all know what I've been telling you for a long time. Get you a few extra things on your shelf. Well, you might ought to be doing that because we don't know what we're looking at. We don't know what's going to happen in our world. We don't know what's going to be available and what is it. So the wise thing to do is get two or three extras of the things that you like. I've told you before, don't stock up on something just because it's on sale. Only get the things that your family enjoys eating. Now, if everybody in the family don't like beans and rice, I'd get some beans and rice anyway because that's something that will fill your tummy up and keep you full. 
And I've told you before, oatmeal is a great thing to have. It's healthy for you and it keeps you full when you eat it. You don't get hungry again in an hour. So think about some things that will sustain you for a longer period of time should we have issues and should the shelves become more bare than they are now. And I tell you, there's some pretty, pretty bare places in a lot of the stores. Some of ours down here, a lot of the canned goods and stuff's not there. So just be wise. I don't want any of my friends to need something and not have it. Have you some extra baking powder and baking soda and flour and sugar and salt, stuff to cook with. You know, you make a, corn, a pan of cornbread, you do it pretty good, or a pan of biscuits. Have those things that you need to cook with and, and uh, just, just be wise. Prepare a little bit ahead. And y'all, um, take a little bit of time to thank the good Lord for what you do have and for wisdom to know what to do in the world we live in today. Thank Him for His blessings, for everything He's given you. You can do that by yourself. That's His air you're breathing. If He cuts it off, then we're all gone. That's His air that we're breathing. So be sure and give Him thanks. Y'all take care of yourself and be back here in a day or two. I'll try to meet you back and have something else good. And until then, I'm fixing to pack my little ditty bag and get ready to go up there and stay with Lauren and uh, I'll be back home the weekend, but y'all will see both of these videos before I get back home. The Lord keep you. I'll see you soon.